All right, so we just did our soft edge duotone on top of our hard edge. And even though it's all fairly subtle as variations within our color, because our colors are so distinct and bright, it really adds a lot to the overall image. Now, another way you can do it at any time is to just turn off your backgrounds, turn off any reference you have, and turn off your black line art so you're just seeing your colors, right? And then what you can do is hold down Option, Layer, Merge, up. So what do we need to do? We need to select all the layers that are visible. That's something that PhotoP has us do. And they can be folders too. Then hold down Option and then say Layer, Merge Layers. And it will create a new combined layer on top of everything. Right, that has whatever flat color, without whatever duotone. If you erased anything, it's all now together here, which is very helpful. Because now, with that, I can do little touch-ups, especially with dodge and burn, especially with a really soft-edged brush, a hundred, a zero percent hardness brush pretty large at an exposure of less than 30, pressure sensitive. So if there's little any areas I want to darken, I can burn them. Nice and soft edge, like we did for our landscapes, like we did for our creatures. But this is what I do at the end, because what you'll notice is it starts to saturate where you burn, and it's starting to change that orange into reds. So this is hinting into the next step of digital coloring, which is called full spectrum. Now, if you want it to be harder edged instead of softer edge, you can always just tighten up your brush, like harden the edge of it. And I'm not sure where I might want a harder edge. Maybe on the bottom side of this to make it a little bit more dimensional. Maybe shadows under these. And all these kind of shading effects, especially on a flat graphic like mine, start to make it look like it's embossed. So I'm just dodging. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm burning to darken. I can also use the dodge tool to lighten. So I'll usually do my burning first. Keep it subtle. This is all underneath your line art, so you know your artwork is safe. And you can burn. Do a nice little hard-edged one there and there. And you can combine hard-edged and soft-edged together to get the image you want. Just like in real life, we have hard edge shadows, they're called cast shadows, and we have soft edge shadows called form shadows. Across all the things we see. And you can always use the sponge tool too to take away saturation. Okay, so now I've got duotone, both soft and hard. It's all in this one layer. I can also use layer styles to affect this. So let me show you what I mean. If I double click on that combined duotone layer, one layer style that's wonderful for duotone is called satin. So if I click on satin, that's not going to look great, right? But if I play with the opacity and the size, I can get kind of a wave shadow across my image. And the distance, that can be pretty interesting. And I can play with it with a different blending mode like maybe overlay. 
or pin light. And that can help bring out different duotone effects. Now that's if you do it over the whole image. So what does that look like without black line art? It looks like that. You kind of have now this satin, satiny wave. If I turn the satin effect off, so remember effects are just added to your pixels within the layer. Come on, Photo P. Keep up with me. There it is. You can just turn them on and off. So that's without it. That's with it. Okay. What I think is even cooler is if you do it on an unmerged layer. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to turn it off here. I'm going to turn my duotone color on. Turn these effects off. So here is just my flat color, right? Let's take my duotone hard edge. This is actually why I think doing hard edge first, even if you like a soft edge result, is a good idea. I'm going to duplicate my hard edge. I'm going to put it over the top of what I was doing. Okay, so that's my hard edge duotone. Why does it look so soft? <laughs> I think that's actually my soft edge duotone. I didn't relabel it. So let me take my actual hard edge duotone, merge it, bring it over the top. We get, there we go. There's my hard edge duotone. We get so many uh, layers in this sandwich. Okay, what I'm going to do is now apply satin to this. Remember, this is a duplicate. So click on satin and look at all the kind of crazy waves of shadow it will put in. So satin is for adding darks. And I'm going to play it with multiply. That's its default, just so you can see. And then you can play with its distance. And with its size. So the smaller it is, the more of those little ripples, just like ripples in a satin piece of fabric you can get. So it can get really crazy. I do a pretty large size and that softens it out. And you can play at different lighting angles. And you can play with different blending modes. Always. Pin light's pretty effective. This helps to desaturate some of your really saturated colors as well. And then, because it's on a copy, you layer that on top of other things. And then you can play with your opacity. And then you can always turn these effects on and off. So that's one way. Another effect that I like is the bevel and emboss effect. And this will give you a highlight, kind of a duotone highlight, on each of your shapes. So you have to go to bevel and emboss, and then you're going to play with the screen mode, which is to lighten. And you want to play with the size. And how much you want to soften it. Come on. And the depth. Come on. Keep up with me. And it's just not triggering it yet, but it's a great effect. And you can pair those two and get some interesting things to happen. Let's see, where do I have it? There we go. 
So I had some other layers on top of it kind of keeping it from happening. So you can see all those kind of ripples. Those are all affecting, all made with the effects of lights and darks. I can turn them on. I can turn them off. You can do them on hard edge duotone. You can do them on soft edge duotone. You can play with how opaque they are. You can layer them up, layer them underneath. as long as photo p is keeping up with you these are your opportunities and then when you put your black line art on top of it it can look really really interesting you know and have a lot of variation in that color that looks like you spend a lot of time painting it so from this to this come on <laughs> might be a big jump so then you can always modify your effect with opacity so using satin and bevel and emboss you can really get things to show up in interesting ways using those layer styles as well as just adjustments so you see all those kind of subtleties now built in And it gives a little bit more depth and, and indent to all of your line art. So Bella, that's something I would recommend with your butterfly to play with, right? Because it will, will send extra waves of subtle variation around your line art, even where you didn't think to color it before or alter your duotones before. Okay. Now, if you ever don't like that, what you can do is right click in little spots. Like I don't like the spot it gives on the on the tongue. I can rasterize the layer style and then softly erase it away. With a soft edged eraser. And reveal, you know, other things or bring other things on top of it. So we're making a pretty complicated sandwich here, and that's just adding our duotones. And you want to understand what everything is doing. And you want to save your work, especially because photo P starts to have problems with all of these different high resolution layers and effects. And so when you're happy with your duotone, you can merge all those layers together for the next step. So there's a really basic duotone uh, effects on flat color. I can move that underneath. And we can decide how much of these others we want by kind of blending them in. And we can erase out areas we think that go too far. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. So combinations of hard and soft color, of dodging and burning, of all these different things, I can now take all of those layers, hold down shift, and just say layer merge layers, and make one duotone layer on top of my flat color. And once you have that one duotone layer, then if you feel like I lost a little bit of saturation from all the darkening, I can just go to image adjustment and go to hue saturation and I can just goose it a little bit. Brighten everything a little bit. This is all underneath your black line art. Whatever I think it needs. Okay, so we have flat color 